my last KDP video, I showed you how to create a reusable cover template in Photoshop. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use that template to create a new cover for my KDP book. To review, my template has a background color layer, text on the spine for my title, text on the back cover for my brand name or author name, although this could also be on the front cover if you prefer, and then the original template that I downloaded from the KDP website. In this template, I have it set as the top layer to 50% so that when I enable it, I can still see my content below and make sure it fits outside of the bleed areas. I also have guidelines indicating where the trim and bleed areas are and keep all content out of those boxes. When designing a new cover, I never do any of the actual design work in the template itself. I always design a graphic in a separate document and then import it into the Photoshop template. The reason for this is I often reuse graphics, whether for a different product such as a t-shirt or in other notebooks. To add a graphic to my cover template, I use the place function, which is found on the file menu. There are two different place options in the file menu, Place Embedded and Place Linked. Place Embedded means that Photoshop will make a copy of your graphic and save it inside of the Photoshop document. The benefit of this is that if your file is moved or changed, it doesn't affect your cover art. The downside, however, is that it creates larger Photoshop files and can fill up your hard drive quicker. Place Linked, on the other hand, will link to the original graphic file. Any updates that you make in the original will be reflected in your template file. Place linked will also result in smaller Photoshop files, so if you plan on saving a lot of your templates, you may want to use linked graphics. The downside of linked graphics is that if you move the original, Photoshop won't know how to load it when, the next time you open your template. After you've selected one of the place options, select the file you'd like to place into your cover template and click Place. Resize the graphic to your cover. Once my graphic is the desired size, I'll hit Enter to apply the transformation. To center the graphic vertically within the document, I'll do Control A to select the entire document, click the Move tool, and then click the Center Vertical button. I'll then click Control or Command D to unselect the document. The benefit of having a linked graphic is that you can easily edit the original and have it updated in your Photoshop template. So for example with this graphic, I don't like how the shadow has a white ring around it. So in order to edit this graphic, I'll locate the layer in my Layers panel and double click on it. This will open the graphic in a compatible editing program. In this case, because it's an Illustrator file, it opened in Illustrator. If you embedded a Photoshop document, it would open in Photoshop. In order to remove the shadow, I'll click the eye next to the layer that contains the shadow, and then click Command S to save the file. I can also go to File Save. Now that the file has been saved in Illustrator, it will automatically update in my Photoshop document. Now you can see that the shadow has disappeared from the graphic on my Photoshop template. For most covers, I will add a title to the cover, although because I have my title on the spine, it's not required. KDB requires that you have your title either on your front cover or your spine. You don't have to have it on both, but I often do. To add a new text for the title, I'll click on the text tool in the toolbar, Click on the front cover and type my title text. And click the check mark in the toolbar to accept the text. To resize it, 
I can either go to the text panel on the character panel and click the size, or I can click the size in the toolbar, or I can hit Control or Command T in order to resize it. And hit Enter to accept the size change. And now in order to center my title, I'll use the Rectangle Marquee tool from the toolbar. I will make sure that under View, Snap is selected so that my selection will snap to my grid lines. And then I'll select the Trim line. If you're not sure which one that is, you can turn your template back on. So select the Trim line, click and drag from corner to corner. Now that the front cover is selected, click the Move tool and click the Align Horizontal Centers button. I can now use my arrow keys to move the title up or down the cover. If I want to rotate my title, I'll do Command or Control T again, put my cursor near one of the corners until it turns into this corner arrow, and then click and drag to rotate the title text. I can then click and drag the title to move it around the cover. If you want to center two objects at once, such as both the title and your graphic, you can click one layer, hold down shift and click the second layer to select them both at the same time, and optionally, you can click Command-G to group them together. Do the selection as you did earlier. Click your Move tool and center as necessary. The last, the last part in creating a cover, I'll need to update my spine text to the title of my book. To do this, I can either double click on the text layer in the layer box, or click the text tool and double click on the text. And then click the check mark. After you update your title text, you'll probably want to center it vertically again. And remember, in order to do this, you'll do Control A to select the entire document, Click the Move tool, and then click the Vertical Align Center button. Now that my totally awesome cover art is ready to go, I'll save it as a PDF to upload to KDP. In order to do this, go to File, Save As, under Format, select PDF, and click Save. Uncheck all of the boxes under Options, and then click Save PDF. And that's how I use my reusable Photoshop template to create cover art for my KDP books. Thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments if there's anything else you need to know to be successful on your KDP journey.